Hey folks, Colin, MM0OPX. In this video I want to talk about, about in detail about the uh, Moxon center plate. Um, now this is obviously kind of the main component of the, uh, the Moxon, um, so I thought I'd go into a bit of detail um, and you know how I did what I did um, and how I made it. All right, so before you make your base plate, um, you need to you need to work out what type of um, supports you're going to be using for the wire. Now, in my case, I'm using uh, the wind jammer, uh, five meter uh, poles, but I'm not using the end section, so I only need the bottom four sections. So, really, you need to, you need to know what type of pole you're getting. Um, now, you can see on the wind jammer pole, this is this is the bottom of it, but this cap actually completely comes off. Now that becomes important because when you have your finished assembly, you want be, to be able to slide um, the, um, the pole in. Now, also, you need to know what diameter you're going to be working with. So if I check with this uh, vernier here, so you can see 30, nearly 31.7 mil. And for the, you, those of you across the pond, um, 1.247 inch. Now, clamps that I'm going to be using, now I've had a lot of experience with use, I use these in a lot of it, uh, a lot of projects. These are rubber um, hydraulic uh, hose clamps. Now these are made by a company called uh, RSB, and if I'm not mistaken, the part number of these is RAVG Romeo Alpha Victor Golf um, 430. Four stands for the um, spacing of the holes, and uh, 30 is 30 is the diameter of the clamps. So if we actually put the clamps around here, you can see that they fit extremely snugly. So ideally you want to go for the size of, whatever size of pole that you have, you want to just almost go for the next size down. So you'll want a little bit of interference. Now you could use, um, uh, you know, the plastic clamps are quite common. They're actually more common than actually these. But if you're going to use plastic clamps, you need to get the exact diameter. Diameter. If you're going to start, you, you can't. You can't have. Uh, you can't go really any smaller than the diameter of the, the tube, because if you do, you'll end up crushing it, deforming it, or breaking it. All right. So that's really what you need to know. The clamps that you're going to be using, but more importantly, uh, what type of pole uh, that you're going to be using. But also keep in mind that um, are you going to get a continuous supply of these? Are you going to be able to get spares and so on and so on? because you don't want to end up with four poles, you break a section and you can't buy another one and then you've got to, you've got to uh, remake your moxon uh, all over again. So before, just before we get started, um, I'll do a little drawing here, hopefully this will make sense. So, two main types of moxons I've seen people make for HF. So they make the, the H shape, so it's like this, that's your boom. Oops, my drawing's not very good. And that's your elements and there's your elements coming down here so that's one way to do it the other way to do it which is what i've done it is i've got a center base plate like so with a hole in the middle for the mast and then i've got my four poles coming out like this and obviously wire comes all the way around and gets tensioned it's not the best diagram but hopefully you get the just now what material are you going to use? I actually spent a bit of money, not a great deal of money, but I found a company, um, and I'll put a link in the description to, to, to this company, because this is where I actually got the um, the type of material I ended up using, and I I thought, right, I'll buy a few different types. Um, I think this was um, polythene. Um, this was okay, but you can see that it's got a bit of flex, and I didn't like that. And it was it was quite heavy as well. I then got some of this stuff. This is clear extruded acrylic. This has actually got some uh, potential. Um, this is I'm not quite sure how thick this is. I'll just measure it. Eight mil. Yeah. Again, quite heavy. Um, so it was a contender, but not. I then got this stuff, this is a 8mm PVC sheet, this stuff's really heavy. It's quite rigid for the size, but really heavy. 
Um, so, so I got all those, but also I ordered some of this stuff. Now this stuff was a real punt. It was a real gamble. And I didn't know what to think of it when I ordered it, but I thought I'm going to order some anyway. So what this is, is what you call aluminium or aluminium composite sheet. So there's a very thin layer, you can see it shining there, of aluminium, top and bottom. Um, and I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head what the plastic is in, in the middle, but it's UV resistant anyway. And this stuff, because it's a laminate, is extremely strong uh, relative to the thickness. Um, but what I wanted to do is instead of just using one of these, what I wanted to do was make a sandwich, which would obviously make it, you know, make the antenna uh, a lot, lot stronger. So now we had our material, we had to know where we wanted to actually um, put everything. Here's my bit of paper I've drawn on the back. So hopefully you can see this. So on here is a template, and there's a, there's a lot of holes marked out here. Now this template is a one-to-one -one scale, uh, meaning that when I print it out, all I need to do is cut this out with a pair of scissors, stick it on with some print stick, uh, whatever you call that, you know, kids glue. Stick it on to your material, and then all you need to do is, is just carefully drill out the holes to the correct diameter. So you can see it would be there, that would be that hole there, and so on, and so on. Three holes here. These are for the um, for mounting the mast, and there's a hole here right in the middle. And this is these holes are they're not the actual size obviously these are just guide holes and the smaller you make them it's easier to uh, to get your pilot drill through so this was a previous plate i made um i needed to make a bigger plate I, i'm not going to that it's not really important um but I, i'd made a bigger plate just to test out so this was the finished article and um, you could see and everything you know pretty neat so that worked out pretty good so there's actually two of those um and then after that, it was almost a case of uh, of just assembling. Um, so what I'll actually do is I'll go and get the uh, the uh, the one that I'm using, and I'll go into a bit more detail with that. So this is one side of the of the finished article, um, and you can see um, obviously the holes that have been drilled. Um, obviously the centre hole. I had to elongate this just a little bit here. Um, this hole here is just for the coax to go through. And um, so two poles. Of, I've got two of these that are uh, um, identical. If I turn around to the other side, you can see that I've got this aluminium uh, angle bracket on here. Now, originally this was a two inch by three inch plate um, because I actually had two of these rubber clamps, but what I decided to do was put one on either side um, so I, I could actually remove some of this. Um, and you can see the three holes that we drilled earlier, that's what those were used for. Um, so I've actually got two of those. This is the bottom plate. Now you can see it's identical to the other side, but you can see I've actually got these bolts in here and I've actually got these bolts constrained because it helps just a little bit. Um, now these bolts, I'll just look at what length they are. I think these were 60s, yeah. So, so I should say that all the hardware on this is stainless steel. It's 304. I didn't, I, I couldn't justify the extra event that the extra um, to go to 316 because I'm, I'm not, it's, it's a portable antenna, it's not going to be sitting in a salt water environment all the time. So 304 is more than ample. So M6, but if you're in the States, quarter inch would be would be absolutely fine. So what I've done is I've constrained these, so I've got, to, and I've tried to keep the weight down as possible. You see that I've not used a washer on this side, but you can get away with it because these bolts are not tight. So there's a spring washer here under every one of these, and then what you call a lock nut or a half nut. And um, that's just, to, that, again, that's just to save just a little bit of weight. So you get all those in there, you get the 16 of those in. And then it's just a case of putting on your, uh, putting on your clamps, in case of threading those on. So there's our clamps on. Now I should say that you only have to do this once. Um, so once it's done, you only need to assemble it one, uh, just the once. Now, these plates, these were bought pre-cut with outside dimensions. Um, but what I'm going to do is, at some point, 
I'm going to make this template freely downloadable. I'll actually annotate it and tell you what the diameter of each hole is. So what you could actually do is download it for free, stick it onto your plate, um, drill them, and uh, you don't need to worry about measuring. Um, as long as you've got a drill, um, you know, even just a hand drill, battery drill, a um, few drill bits, um, and you know that, that that's all that's all you need. So that's our that's our bottom plate with the clamps on it. And then we want to get the top plate. You'd think this would be difficult, but it's not really. It goes on quite easy. There we go. Now, when I drilled these plates, I, I basically I, I taped them together. So I made sure that um, we were getting the whole position in both plates so everything was going to tie in. So then it's just a case of uh, putting your nuts, your washers and your nuts on. Now you can see that these bolts are so much longer and and the reason I'm, I'll make, I'll uh, I'll show you what the reason is for that in a bit Right, so there's our base plate assembled. Um, so as I said earlier, you need to have extra length in your bolts because what you find is, now remember, the diameter of this, these holes, is slightly smaller than the poles, so the poles don't go in that easy. So what you need to do is you need to pull the plate up and give it plenty of wiggle room, like that, like so. And then your poles will go in, no problem. Um, and then you can get it... Um, together in the field. Now, I just like using a, a long 10mm a socket, I'll show you. This is just a 3.8 10mm socket. I like to just, like though, for tightening it up like so. Now, you could use wing nuts on this, butterfly nuts. There's no, no there's, there's nothing stopping you, but um, I just saved a little bit extra weight by using these half nuts. That That's the only thing for a bit of, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with using butterfly nuts and it's one less thing to carry uh, in the field. Um, and that's always good because if you forget, see even if you forgot this, you could actually probably tighten these up by hand, like so, as long as you're holding the plate flat and that would be enough. Remember you don't need a lot of tension on these. If you over tighten these up you'll end up ruining these plates, they, they don't need a lot of tension to hold them. You've got all those um, uh, nuts and bolts and you know the tension is spread all between it so they, they don't need they don't need to be tight, so don't be using um, spanners or, or anything like that. Um, I don't think I said, but when I made these, these, these angle brackets here, I also used templates for these to drill these three holes and then these two holes. In practice, you don't really need to do that. I mean, you could, basically, you could hold that to there and then just drill through the whole lot if you really wanted to. Um, but that's our, you know, that's almost our finished package for our plate. It's... You know, it's, I think it's really quite neat, um, and considering I don't have a 3D printer, you know, I don't have a lot of fancy tools, you know, I've just made do with what I've got um, to come up with something that, that works, and it, and it looks um, reasonably good. Um, so, I'm going to um, um, I'm going to do a final overview with the Moxon when I get it back up in the air. Um, I'm going to do a, a, an overview, and I'm going to show you a, a video of me actually putting this thing together, getting it up, and then hopefully... Um, getting some more contacts and then um, hopefully we can do a live stream or two and, uh, and perhaps work uh, or work some DX. If I've, again, if I've forgotten anything, please put it in the comments below. Um, if you'd prefer to email me, then my email is good on uh, QRZ. So yeah, until the next time everyone, 73, bye for now.